a real estate magnate, or an American horror story? That's the question on everybody's mind when Robert Durst is mentioned. The now 78-year-old gained public attention in the 80s following the disappearance of his wife. But little did many know that that was only the beginning of a lifetime of crime, an unsolved disappearance. Robert first became a person of interest in the early 80s following the unexplained disappearance of his wife, Kathleen McCormick Durst, who he married back in 1973. Though unproven to date, events leading to Kathleen's disappearance have caused investigators and those closest to her to suspect that Robert was somehow involved. Gilbert Najme, a friend of Kathleen's, recalled that the last time they saw each other was at a dinner party. According to Najme, Kathleen showed up upset and wearing red sweatpants, which is unusual for Kathleen, who typically dressed in in high quality clothes. Though still clearly upset, Kathleen reportedly left the diner after a call from Robert. That was the last time Najime saw her friend. Despite his continual denial, Kathleen's family held on to their firm conviction about Robert's involvement in the disappearance. Before she died, Kathleen's mom, Anne McCormick, tried suing Robert because she truly believed he did something to Kathleen and robbed them of the chance to give her a proper funeral. When asked if he had any doubt about who got rid of Kathleen, Jim McCormick, Robert's then brother-in-law said, none, absolutely none. Bob Durst killed my sister in 1982. Apart from McCormick's gut feeling, Robert's statements throughout the years-long investigation have also contributed to the suspicion that he was in fact involved in Kathleen's disappearance. According to the police, Robert's stories have been completely contradictory. While this does not necessarily mean that he had a hand in Kathleen's disappearance, it is not something many people were willing to let go of. Murder Mystery Robert was once again back in the news in 2001 when he was arrested and charged with the murder of Morris Black, his elderly neighbor. The arrest came after Black's body was found floating in the Galveston Bay. Robert was later extradited to Texas, where he was tried for murder. During the trial, Robert claimed self-defense, explaining that Black threatened him with a gun that accidentally went off during a struggle between the two men. The pistol reportedly shot Black in the face, instantly killing him. Robert further admitted to disassembling Black body before dumping the remains somewhere in the neighborhood. But because Black's head was never recovered, it was hard to determine whether or not Robert's account of the story was true. Due to lack of enough evidence, Robert was later acquitted of the murder charge. He was, however, convicted on charges of evidence tampering and bail jumping from a prior arrest. Robert begged a five-year sentence, but ended up staying in prison for only a few months. He was released on parole on July 15, 2005, only seven months after pleading guilty in Front of a jury. Though acquitted of the murder charge, many are still convinced that Black's death was no accident. Speaking on Robert's role in the death, former Galveston trial judge Susan Chris said, the body was cut perfectly like a surgeon who knew how to use this tool on this bone and a certain kind of tool on that muscle. It looked like not a first time job. That was pretty scary. Friend or foe. Before Morris Black, there was another case, another murder, that once again made Robert a person of interest. And this time, there was no escape for Robert. On December 24, 2000, Susan Berman, a longtime friend of Robert's, was found dead in her California home. From the crime scene alone, the police could easily tell that this was a crime carried out by someone experienced. A few days after Berman's body was found, the Beverly Hills Police Department received a letter containing the word cadaver and Berman's address. At the initial stages of the investigation, there was no reason to believe Robert had a hand in the murder, but it would later be discovered that he had been in California a few days before Berman died. Police would also later reveal that Berman had received $50,000 from Robert in two installments. Why he sent the money was a question they could not provide an answer to at the time. Many more questions about the case went unanswered. That is, until Andrew Jarecki came into the picture. Not all good things. With three high-profile cases linked to him and very little proof to ascertain his involvement, Robert's life piqued the interest of many. Andrew Jerkey, a budding filmmaker at the time, was one of them. This interest resulted in the 2010 American crime drama All Good Things, with Ryan Gosling and Kirsten Dunst taking up the lead roles. In this film, Jerkey explored Robert's life and, most significantly, his involvement with Kathleen's disappearance. All Good Things received positive responses from viewers, including Robert Durst, duly impressed, 
podcast, Robert reached out to Jerky and offered to be interviewed despite his infamous record of being uncooperative with journalists in the past. The collaboration resulted in Jerky serving as a co-writer, co-producer, and director in the popular six-part HBO doc series released in 2015. In early 2015, the Jinx, The Life and Death of Robert Durst was released. Interestingly, not only did the docu-series give an insight into Robert's life, but it also successfully provided sustainable proof of his involvement in the three murders. The series detailed Kathleen's mystery disappearance, Berman's death, and Black's murder. Viewers were finally able to piece the puzzle together. It became clear that Robert was indeed a murderer. A trial of lies. On March 14, 2015, FBI agents arrested Robert in New Orleans, where he had registered under a false name. It was, however, not until March 2020 that Robert's trial for Berman's murder started. In the trial, evidence from the jinx proved that Robert had written the 1982 note sent to the police following Berman's murder. When asked for his thoughts on the note during an episode of the jinx, Durst told filmmakers that the person who wrote the cadaver note was taking a big risk. This is because it was something that only the killer could have written. He was right. A part of the jinx saw Jericho to find a link between the cadaver note and the prior letter Robert had sent to Berman before she died. In the address of the old letter, Robert misspelled the first word of Beverly Hills as Beverly. The cadaver note apparently also had the same word spelled wrongly. Forensic analysis would later prove that the old letter and the cadaver note were in fact written by the same person. Another evidence used against Robert during his trial was an off-camera recording, an admission of sorts that was caught by producers while filming the jinx. In the final scene of the doc series, Robert, on a hot mic and completely unaware that he was still being recorded, mumbled to himself as he goes into the bathroom. That was perhaps all the proof needed. Testimony by Robert's brother Douglas also gave an insight into the estranged relationship with his wealthy and famous family. I have fear that my brother has threatened to kill me, and I have fear that he may have the means to do so. Many of Berman's friends also testified, hinting at the possibility that Robert ended her life. They theorized that Berman knew too much about what happened to Kathleen. The trial also saw Robert admit that he had lied under the oath during his trial for the murder of Morris Black, and he lied five times during his current trial. Expectedly, all of this evidence helped the jury reach a judgment, the judgment that would in fact change everything. On September 14th, 2021, the jury announced that they had reached an agreement. Robert was found guilty on the count of first-degree murder and the death of Susan Berman. He was also found guilty of multiple special circumstance charges, leading to a life in prison sentence with no parole. We the jury in the above entitled action find the defendant Robert Durst, guilty of the crime of first degree murder of Susan Berman. Though nothing can be done to bring back Berman, many people who have followed Robert's story over the years see the sentence as a step in the right direction. Let us know what you think about Robert's life in the comments section. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell to also get regular updates about your favorite stars. Thanks for watching.